Um, of course, SPSS is also very expensive, which kind of um, is, is an issue, not just for us end users, but it's actually an issue for a lot of organizations who seem to be gravitating to R because of, because of cost issues. Um, as for Python, another cousin, uh, it's a far broader uh, programming language. Uh, there are excellent statistical libraries that are implemented for Python. And it's it's a it's a very powerful language if you're interested in a bit of uh, programming. I, I recommend that you you tap into that as well as a little bit. But uh, but the great thing with R in comparison to Python is that a lot of functions are already implemented for statistical computation. So if you want to do a t-test, R's got it. If you want to do uh, you know if you want to compute the mean, R has it. Whereas with Python, you may have to build it from uh, from scratch unless you find the right statistical libraries. Uh, so uh, that's all I've got on, on comparison. So today our goal is to get your hands on your own transcript from Quantland and we'll do a little bit of data analysis on it. <clears throat> and uh, you won't have to present it, but I will present mine so you can see uh, my, my old Quantland uh, transcript. Uh, we're going to download it. Uh, we're going to have to clean it up because uh, data acquisition, especially off of uh, the public domain, is very, very messy. And so uh, we'll, we'll deal with the cleanup process. And uh, once we've cleaned it up, we'll import it into R, and then we're ready to roll with some functions and we'll analyze it. We'll try to v visualize it as well. We'll produce some bar plots and a few, um, a few uh, other visualizations. So this is the plan for today. Uh, anyone have any questions so far? Does this make sense? Uh, of course, the number one uh, order of business is to install uh, the software packages. So maybe uh, can anyone tell me <clears throat> uh, if in, in you can you can either speak uh, with your voice or you can um, the text uh, in the in the chat there. Uh, who does not have uh, the following software? And I'll just type it in there. Uh, the R engine, uh, R studio, and, um, and, and a GitHub account. Is there anyone who does not have these installed? I sense silence. Lev, how do we how do we know? I know that I, I know that I have R Studio. I don't know about Engine or GitHub. Mm -hmm. If um, so, a GitHub.com is a service. It's a it's a community uh, website for um, for storing code and sharing code with others. Uh, so if you head over to GitHub.com and you can log in, then that's a that's a good sign. That means that you have an account. If you don't, then you may need to create one. Uh, we can we can deal with it uh, once we get to that part. Of the, okay. here, here's a clickable link if you want to click that and, and see what that looks like. Um, the so if you have R Studio but you don't have R, that would be an unusual situation in which you open R Studio and it would complain that it can't execute any commands because you you didn't have the R engine so installed. So R engine, okay, yeah, got it. So yeah, it, yeah. So I've got R engine and R Studio. I know I have that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So then that it it sounds like if you had R Studio, then chances are you already went through the installation process and you you installed the R as well. So it seems like um, most of us or all of us have at least R and R Studio and possibly GitHub as well. Um, I'll just give one more moment for you to reflect, just to make sure that you do have an, uh, a GitHub account as well. So I'll give you a minute to just click that link that I, I embedded in the, and you can check for an account. Uh, so at this point, <laughs> I'm going to close the, uh, the, the keynote file. Actually, I'll just do a general screen share because we do have to do a few things.
OK, uh, can everybody uh, every, everybody see this? Oops. So far. I now I can't see your messages now actually yep. oh, it shows up here in my watch. OK, OK, so uh, head over to the Quantlin website and log in with your account. And um, uh, go over to your student menu. Go to how do you get your transcripts? Is it records? Yeah, records. Uh, go to academic transcript, all levels, and you get a view like this. Uh, once you have this view, uh, just select everything from transcript data and select it all the way to the bottom of the um, the page. I suppose. How about here to to the to the uh, complete with unofficial transcript there? So you've got everything from transcript data to unofficial transcript. And open Excel and paste it in there. So we just do a copy paste into a into here. <coughs> um, so I'll, I'll I'll give everyone a minute to catch up to this. That's right, feel free to comment. I did fail most of my classes in first year Quantlin. Makes me feel better for getting a D in pre-calculus my first semester. <laughs> uh, Lev, is each person uh, downloading a separate transcript? Everyone should download their own transcript. Uh, Danny, because you're not a Quantlin student, you may, you probably won't have uh, okay. uh, info uh, access to this. So I'm going to send you my transcript. Great, thank you. Um, so hold on, I'm going to uh, turn off sharing for a moment so I can send this to you. Is there anyone else who is not a Quantlin student and does not have a Quantlin transcript? OK, uh, try to open that then. Um, Lev, did you put it in the chat window? No, 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 I just sent that to you. Via uh, email, correct? Yeah, okay. via email, yeah. OK. OK, so how does it look, uh, everyone? Is, is everyone uh, at the stage where uh, the where the file, sorry, where the contents of the web transcript have been pasted into Excel. If you could just somehow signify it on uh, in this chat window, uh, then uh, then we can take the next step. Good. I'm not getting any no's and I got one yes. OK, well, slowly we can crawl forward. Uh, so the number uh, one thing that we need to do here with this data in this Excel format, the nice thing is, and, and I hope this is what it looks like for you too, is that different uh, table cells from the web transcript have been pasted correctly into different cells in the Excel into into the Excel file rather than you know all of this all of this each row of text would be could be in one cell as well that that would be a mistake that would be a problem uh, if it's pasted similarly to this then then you're you're in good uh, you're in a good stage uh, the number uh, so we need to format this as correctly as a, as possible as a CSV file that we can import into R, which means that we want 
uh, all of the all of the columns of data without any guck that's here in between. And we want to preserve one more piece of information, which is the the term. So in order for us to do this, I'm going to right click or two finger tap on the Mac and click on insert. And so now I have a new column on the left side here, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna call this uh, term. So we have a new. We're creating a new column. In this new column, uh, we're going to uh, take this information fall 2002, and we're gonna convert it to uh, a a term code. And and I'm gonna come up with this term code, I'm, and we're gonna call the uh, fall uh, three zero. Uh, and I'll, I'll put the definitions here so you have it. So fall is going to be a three zero, a spring is going to be a one zero, and summer is going to be a two zero. So we're going to put these codes together and, and we're going to end up with the year and the term code 2002-30 for, for the fall. And we can propagate this down if you grab the um, bottom right corner, you can uh, propagate it down and multiply it for every course that you have. Uh, so I'm going to pause here and look for questions, look for any issues that you're encountering. You can, you can. Uh, you, I think, uh, I think the group is small enough that we could try, uh, and, and you could feel free to uh, unmute so that you can uh, speak more spontaneously. If it becomes a mess, then we could. Uh, we could revert to this current system, but uh, but because we, I, I imagine there will be a lot of questions. We can um, we can kind of go back and forth and and uh, have a conversation here. So how how does it look for everyone? Any success? So the goal now is to um, uh, do this for every course. So for me, this is going to be quite a long time. Uh, for those of you who just joined us, uh, Simi et al., um, uh, we the number one step in this workshop was to head over to your Quantlin student profile to display your uh, transcript under uh, records and copy paste the contents of that web page into an Excel spreadsheet. And so now we are in the step of cleaning up the data. We have uh, we have uh, copied everything from the word transcript data all the way to the bottom where it says unofficial transcript and we copied that and pasted it in here. Uh, we we have we have basically a web version of that transcript, uh, almost one to one embedded here, and now we're just uh, creating a new column uh, that's called term, and we're using this set of definitions to create a new term code with the combination of year and the semester. So fall semester is three zero, and for this reason, this becomes two thousand and two three zero. And so we continue on. We skip uh, all of these. All of these are going to get deleted. So I can grab this right now. I'm selecting all of these rows in between semesters, and I'm just going to hit delete. But remember that there's this bit of information, 2003 spring, that I'm going to need. Uh, so delete, and I type in the code 2010 and propagate it down. And so now this becomes kind of a, a repetitive uh, action here where I select. I remember 2003 fall is the next one for me. Like that. Oops, that's a little too far. And then continue down all the way until the next one. That's 2004 spring, 2004 spring. Like so. 2004 fall. Like so. 
2000 and what was that sorry i didn't i didn't see my own <laughs> what did i do there i'll just undo there's always a good undo button there we go 2005 spring all right time, time is passing there 2005 spring so uh this is kind of meticulous it's very important that we do it in a in a careful and precise way because uh any misplaced uh, fields and cells and values can cause an issue. 2005 summer. And propagate. I imagine if you just started a quantum recently, then yours will be a little bit long, uh, shorter. 2005 fall. down Uh, how's it going for everyone? Is can you send a sign of life if if it's going? If uh, if if this is making sense so far? Is there some, uh, it's going all right. Fall. one so and everything else can go so uh, here it is <laughs> this is my uh, cleaned up um not sorry not entirely cleaned up i need to get rid of this at the top as well so at the end what you need is a file and don't worry about the formatting but you need a file where you have header rows one header row to be exact and then below it, you've got a, a properly structured, uh, uh, you know, cells and fields, and, uh, and and where each row refers to each course that you've taken, and each column refers to a separate variable regarding some attribute of the course that you've taken. Um, this R column is necessary as well for for a correct calculation because this will. Um, this will, if, if you've retaken, if you've repeated courses, then some courses get excluded from your official transcript calculation. And uh, it anytime there's an E, those uh, rows get excluded. And every time you have an I for the repeated course, those get included. So for that reason, it, we need to preserve that as well. Uh, and, and if we're at this stage, uh, just indicate that you're ready if, if you've reached this stage, otherwise, uh, I'm going to pause here and I'll be looking for uh, at least half a dozen yes in the public chat before we go forward. Great, Mario. You can you can hear our silence now. We're just pausing. Uh, I'm not sure, Mario. Where where were you? I mean, I think you've <laughs> you've been there at the, at last year's workshop, so you may have even last year's files. Um, I can I can tell you a few things if you need to. Um, uh, 
Yeah, okay, like adding adding any file, sorry, any transcript data that's from a different institution is going to be um, a, a lot of work or a lot more different kind of work. Yeah, no worries, Mario. Then um, that, but I think you know what. So just in, in big picture terms, you head over to your Quantlan um, student record. Uh, you display your web transcript, copy paste the page onto an Excel spreadsheet, and uh, we're just in this process of cleaning it up. The only so we're we're cutting out all the rows that don't have uh, structured data. And we've added a new column called term, and we've used this coding scheme where uh, one O refers to uh, spring, two O refers to summer, and three O refers to fall. And so we've recoded the term based on the year and the um, the the term code. Um, Simi, relating to your question, so if you do have uh, incoming transcript from another institution, that uh, I would I would suggest don't worry about that right now. Um, you can fill it in manually um, at a later stage, uh, and you can just create a new rows with with data from other universities, and try to match all the fields so that they are they are the same. Uh, you don't need to do this now. Once you update your data, all of your R syntax is going to work and it will update all of the values as you add more data to it. So uh, what everything that we do is is going to work now with your reduced data set with just quantum based classes. And um, and once you get a chance to do this manually, you will just import the CSV file again into your R. Uh, into the R file, into the R Studio file, and and you just rerun all the code, and voila, all of the new calculations will be based on on your expanded uh, CSV file. Cool. Uh, Kayla, yeah, it, it would make sense to add classes that you're currently taking. No, I, I would. Well, you can, uh, and then you can fill in the values later on. Uh, so right now, right now they will not be part of the transcript calculation. I'm trying to think. I don't think uh, any um, calculation was spit out an error because of missing data. I think I think uh, all of the functions will account for that in some way. But if if that happens, then we just somehow deal with that at that stage. Uh, so how's the cleanup going? Is is anyone done with the cleanup or? Kayla's done. Anyone else? I'll be right back.
Okay, how does it look, everyone? Well, I can't I can't boast about prettiness either. So if uh, I am not hearing a lot. Uh, a lot of feedback from others. Uh, so if if you're if you're all set, if you've got uh, if you've got a file that looks uh, like this in terms of structure. Make sure that there are no loose values anywhere. So uh, every uh, cell that is 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 uh, is filled out is under one of these um, headings. Nothing off to the side, nothing below. It should be just a, a square, not a square, but a rectangle in terms of the the structure of the data. Once you have this, then you click on, uh, and I'm not sure if this shows up. Um, uh, you click on file, Oops. file, um, save as, and then you save it as a CSV UTF-8 comma delimited file, CSV UTF-8 comma delimited file. And uh, so it's a CSV that I'm just, I just typed it into the chat. That's the, that's the format that you want. Um, when you save. And once you've done that, then we're, uh, we'll be ready to switch over to our studio. Nice. Okay, Simi. So all I know is that Simi and uh, Kayla are done. <coughs> uh, can uh, so uh, Simi go to file, save as, and then as you save as, uh, select this format, CSV UTF-8 comma delimited file, and save it somewhere you know. Maybe save it on your desktop so that uh, it's uh, it's the same for all of us. So all all of you try to save on the desktop. Uh, what, how about uh, anyone else? Where are you all? <coughs> Danny, you're done. Okay. Anyone else? I see uh, there are quite a few more of us here. Natasha, very nice. Wonderful. Others?
Uh, is there anyone who needs more time? Uh, where, where are you, Mario? How How is your uh, cleanup looking? If you if you're not entirely done, you could also right now just truncate, meaning that you um, you just save what you have and uh, uh, a, like a clean shorter version, and you can add rows later on because uh, at any time. So the data can the underlying data can change. You can keep the syntax the same, and it'll allow us to uh, still um, do the computations. OK, so um, let's see. Um, let's let's then let's then switch over to uh, our studio. So if you've uh, got this uh, working, uh, <laughs> sounds good. All right, uh, Mario. Yeah, switch switch over to your laptop. That's good. From, from um, so we're we're booting up uh, our studio now, and um, hold on. Let me do a, sh a share screen here. Uh, I still have some uh, other stuff there. OK, so uh, where is it? I guess uh, I'll just do this work. Looks like our studio is not a shareable. Is not a shareable window. In that case, uh, now I went to somewhere totally different. I guess I'll, yeah, I'll need to share. No, no. Screen, I guess. Okay, is this is this visible for everyone? This is not uh, it's not so ideal. I mean, I can share the whole screen, and I, it seems like this is how we need to do. But I can't see your so what I'm, I can't see your messages that well. So I need to. I just have my phone here as a as a support device. Okay, yeah, okay, sounds good. So you can all see the screen. Um, so before we before we load the data, let's do a little uh, refresher um, on on R. Um, so when you when you open R, uh, you may or may not have this white space in the top left. Uh, you will definitely have the console somewhere, so um, uh, you can uh, you can press enter on it, and it will uh, it will uh, go down, and you can review what happened. The console. This is basically showing what the R engine is doing. Uh, we know, you know, for example, displays the version. I've got 3.6.3, holding the windsock version of R. Um, there are a few other information about it. Uh, any commands that have been uh, executed earlier, and then uh, otherwise, you have the Chevron sign uh, that is um, that is indicating that it's ready to receive uh, input. On the top right, we have the environment uh, variable. If uh, if you have any um, variables that you've saved or created, uh, and uh, I've been just playing around here earlier, uh, then you will have things appear here. If you're in stats class, for example, and your homework is still uh, kind of loaded, then you might have a, a big list of variables that you've run. Uh, in here, in the bottom right, you have um, several different tabs. Uh, help is one of the most helpful tabs. Uh, when you uh, want to review how a function works, you can always uh, pull up uh, any function and, and read about it and, and see what kind of arguments it takes and how to use it. Also, when, you, when we generate plots, the histograms, bar plots, and so on, uh, those are going to appear here under the, the plot tab, and it will all happen automatically. Uh, you just when we run a command that contains graphics, it will uh, automatically switch to the plots tab, and we'll be able to to view them. So otherwise, so let's just see in the console down here. You can press uh, or you can type in uh, commands down here, uh, and uh, you can execute them by simply pressing enter. 
and uh, for example, I just computed one plus one here. Uh, this is this is the basic R engine. The this is this is basically all we're doing. We're executing commands, but this is not uh, fancy enough for us. Uh, a lot of the code that we write uh, is best written in multiple lines, not just for aesthetics, but for better formatting and, and legibility. And so our studio has come up with this user interface, which contains the syntax view in the top left. And so I can basically write the same kinds of commands up here and I can click run. And as you can see, it just simply feeds it into the R engine and I get the exact same output as if uh, I've entered it down here. For simple codes, this, uh, you know, it's not necessary to have R Studio. You could do everything in, in, in R, in the basic R engine. And, and when you download R engine from r-project.org, it comes with a basic R viewer, but, but we, we like the fanciness of this because uh, this allows us to create uh, nice syntax uh, files that have many, many lines. It does color highlighting of functions, variables, and stuff like that. We also have this global environment with uh, easy to view uh, data and, and all kinds of other, other features that, that we are just kind of, uh, we, we like the convenience of all of that. Uh, so if this makes sense, then we can try to type up a few uh, functions just to see, just to situate ourselves in R. Uh, let me just look over to the chat here what people are saying. Danny, you say you, you use the console as a computer and have R running on your computer at all times. Oh, the calculator. What do you mean calculator? Um, so the, which, cal the console, it can be used as a calculator, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah you can. I just have R running at all times on my computer, and that's my fastest calculator. It's better than Excel, I find. Yeah, yeah especially if you just need a quick calculation yep. in Excel, you'd have to type equal right, sign, right. find a field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's a good idea to just have that always running in the back. And so, you do you have R Studio open or just the basic R? R uh, Studio. R in R Studio. Cool. That's neat. Uh, yeah. So definitely, that's that's uh, that's a cool idea. Um, okay. Any any other questions? Is this is this okay so far? I think I think most of you are fairly familiar with R, so this might be a little bit boring right now. Um, who can can uh, can you indicate? Should I speed up? Uh, is this good for you? Is, did I say anything new? I'm looking at the the chat to see what people are. Saying speed is fine, okay. Okay, well, well, let let we'll, we'll go through a, a few other basics uh, before we before we dig in further. Um, I want to show you two different kinds of. Uh, I'll, I'll show you more than one thing, but I'll, I'll show you a few things. One is that you you need to know that that there are some what's called variables. So uh, a variable is is uh, something you can you can define it in any way that you want. Uh, it it must it cannot contain spaces. Uh, it can contain periods. It can contain underscores. It I think I don't think it can contain dashes, but um, it can be uh, cap, you know, capitalized letters or not. Uh, so you, it can be all kinds of things. And a variable can hold all sorts of information. It can hold a single value. It can hold a series of values. Uh, and in that case, you need to, if you just want a vector of values, you need to use this function called the C. Uh, if uh, it can hold uh, letters and words, so you could say, uh, you know, red, uh, blue, uh, violet. Uh, and, and it can so a variable can hold all kinds of information. So we're going to make heavily uh, use of uh, um, 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 uh, variables. Akela, no, the variable name cannot contain any special characters. I don't think so. But you can try it too and see what happens. And see, as soon as I put a, a, a special character, it it uh, it bugs out. It won't like it. If I use a space, it doesn't like it. If I use a dash, 
it doesn't like it. Uh, yeah, because a dash will be viewed as a as a subtraction, and this is not a subtraction. Uh, now the other concept to understand are functions. So if uh, a, a lot of built-in functions with R, and right now we're just going to use the base version of R, but you can expand the number of functions by installing new libraries, and and even building your own functions is a possibility. Um, so let, let me tell you about this function called C, uh, which is a very basic function. C, I don't know what it stands for. Let's say that it stands for a column of data. Imagine that uh, whatever we feed into a C is going to be just uh, one vector. A vector is a string or a, or a column of data. And so uh, in this, uh, um, it, well, Simi, I see that you're wondering if it's combined. It's a neat way to think about it, but I, I, I don't, I don't want to say combine because you can actually combine things. And I'm not sure. Does it stand for combine? But th there's a special way to combine. Oh, combine values into vector. Well, there you go, Simi. That's that's a good way to to say it. But there are all kinds of ways to combine things, and uh, this one doesn't doesn't merge them per se, but it does. Uh, uh, it does it does create a vector for us. Uh, Kayla, not a list. There's also a list, uh, and that one uh, that one is different. The for for those of you who are a little bit more uh, familiar with uh, with the programming, uh, I I believe the distinction between a C and a list is that a list can contain a mix of a uh, mix of different data data types. So uh, we can combine, for example, float values with integers with uh, with string values, whereas with the C, we need to keep the data type the same. So it's not a list. It's it's more like a vector. It is a vector, just like in the help document. Um, so at the bare minimum, if we are um, if we are um, creating just a string, if our data set only contains a string of values, a single string, then we could use a C function. But in in most cases, at least in psychology, we're going to be dealing with multiple um, multiple um, columns or multiple variables of data. And so for that, we're going to use another function called a data frame. And the data frame allows us to have headings for each variable and to have uh, each of the variables displayed uh, side by side uh, so that the, the rows and the columns uh, line up. A uh, question from Simi. Uh, sorry, we can go with text and numbers in the same. Uh, so Simi, if, if you wanted to combine vector, sorry, uh, text and numeric data in the same in the same uh, string, then you have to use the list function. So if you if you're mix and matching stuff, then use list. If it's all integer or if it's all text, then you can use the C function. And then for data frame, uh, for for uh, this is for. Um, uh, here I'll just what is the um, multiple columns? Sorry, what's the oh it's hashtag okay. hashtag single uh, column of values. A vector, vector um, containing the same data type can mix and match different data types. Okay. Yeah. So a list, a list could have, for example, one, one. 2.34, whereas in a in a C you would only keep the same kind of data types. Yes, Kayla, I'll save this and I'll I'll, uh, uh, I'll upload it somewhere. Maybe Sid Sydney will help us uh, distribute it to all the participants. Okay. So here we are. Uh, we we understand. Uh, I, I hope you understand that functions will help us accomplish a certain set of computations. And so here, these particular functions are just allowing us to 
uh, structure our data to to be readable and to be computable and uh, and there are many other functions that will help us uh, execute different kinds of computations or accomplish some kind of a data transformation so uh, our first task here is to load the data from our from our computer uh, now in order for us to do this um, we need to figure out what are studio or what are things where we are on our computer and for that there's a fancy little function called get wd it stands for get the working directory get wd uh, looks like this uh, when you execute it it tells us the path in which um, in which uh, r is currently looking in uh, now we need to make sure that this is set to the directory where your uh, CSV file is located. And so uh, here uh, you use set w to, to change the directory in which R is looking. And so here you need to figure out where what that path is. And so this will take a little bit of time. So I'll pause here until you figure this out. On a Mac, it always will start with slash users, slash your uh, username and then the folder. So if, if it happens to be on the desktop, then it's going to be a uh, desktop. If it's elsewhere, then it's elsewhere. On a, on a Windows, and here I need some uh, Windows Wizzes uh, help. I think it's going to be C colon slash slash. And then here, I don't really know where things are located. Is it still users, uh, folks? No, no, anyone? <coughs> what is it? Uh, Simi, you have a question. How did uh, you know how to answer get WD? So when you when you execute this, it just tells you where R is looking. That's all. And then and then we try to change it to what where we know our file is located. So I, I asked most of you to um, to to save all all of your CSV files on the desktop. Uh, Kayla is giving us the Windows. So it looks like I see. So it's C colon backslash users backslash uh, you, your 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 uh, username and then desktop like so. So for me, this is not going to work because this is not a Windows machine and it doesn't this path does not exist. But if you have a Windows machine and you replace this with your username, it should work and you should be able to pull up um, pull up your um, your your folder there. So if it's if if set wd is working correctly, you should see nothing down here. You execute the command and there's no output. It just moves on to the next chevron uh, line ready to take more input. And for a moment here, I need to pause in order to plug in my computer with some juice. All right. So, how does this look? Is is uh, is anyone? Danny or had a question. How how to find? So the current working directory is you find it by executing get wd. <laughs> nice, Simi. Glad glad it's working. Simi, the, the reason I don't introduce this in stats uh, is because it's such a mess and it's it's just so much easier to load a file from GitHub or from the web, a, a direct link to a CSV file, because there it's just uh, copying the URL, pasting it into the read.csv function, and that's it. But this is, and especially to figure out everyone's computer and uh, the path, the unique path to their, you know, to, to a folder is 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 always is always a devilish thing to accomplish. All right. So once you have set your path, and and I'm not really seeing any um, problems so far. Yeah, I agree, Andrew. 
OK, so we've got set WD. It sounds like most of you have it figured out. You've got your path. If not, you can get me to pause and we can troubleshoot. Uh, if not, then I'll, I'll slowly move forward. So now that we, we have asked our studio to look in the directory where uh, our CSV file is, we're ready to load it. And I'm just going to call it DF for data frame. Uh, and I'm going to say um, read read.csv and I'm just going to simply specify the file name in which case I think I just called it Levi uh, transcript.csv. Uh, so there it is. I loaded it. Uh, it shows up in the global environment as a data frame that I've uh, that I've loaded into um, R. I can see in the console that I've executed the command. There's no red text. There's nothing, no output. And that's that's all we're looking for at this point. How does this look for everyone? I'll pause here for a for a minute until I see some affirmatives. Looks like everything's on. Great, so it it looks like I've uh, is this working for everyone? Then you've got you've got your data frame loaded. Um, if here is here is a a um, a quick function that you could run. That's kind of fun. Uh, run head, and then df in the inside, and that gives us just the first six values, the first six rows. And that's just uh, just to give us a little sense of what the data looks like. You can tell, you know, whether um, the columns are loading correctly, whether the col columns are lined up with correct uh, values, you know, credit hours should indicate right hours, so on and so forth. Um, and instead of if you, if you just, I mean, you could just do DF, but then it just unloads so much data that uh, it kind of pollutes your console. You can also specify DF and you could say three if you just want maybe even less. Uh, less data just just to get a little glimpse. OK. How are we looking? Um, okay, I'm not really hearing. Question, yes, question. Ask away. That's not good. Um, actually, wait, it depends on where. So if, if you look at my uh, X column, and I'm just going to open in the viewer here for easy access. Um, for some reason, I have an additional column uh, that I never uh, created, but when Excel exported the data, for some reason it thought that that was an additional column. Uh, so here, if you have that, that's that's okay. We're not going to use that column, but I'm not sure if that's where you have it, Kayla. Uh, then it can't quite make sense. The add add NTL columns. Can you? <laughs> yeah, so the, those the additional columns were just uh, the extra little bits that you threw out to the right hand side of your Excel file. Oh, see, yeah. 
I, but I deleted that, and you can see that it's uh, that that's that information is no longer here. But maybe it it just coded it as there was once there or something. Uh, I'm not sure. Excel always does funny things like that. Um, I thought that you had it in your final Excel file. Everything was, everything was cleaned. Sure I, every, I thought everything was cleaned up except for you had the little legend off to the side and the right. Oh, I, I think I deleted, but let's take a look to see if I open it in text edit. Um, so I, I can, you know, I, I don't, it's not here. Okay. I think I deleted it just before, but but for some reason, X, maybe there was a space or there was, there must have been some guck from the web transcript formatting for, for whatever reason, Excel thought that there was an additional column, but no, there's no information in it uh, at all. Uh, don't worry about getting it getting rid of it right now uh we'll 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 take care of it if it's if it if this is kayla what your issue is just leave it for now um it's not going to cause any issues uh with our computations it's just an additional column that that we're not going to use it even came up with a with a with a header name which is kind of funny Let's see. What did I have a header name? I don't know where. Yeah. So there's no there's no heading name here. And yet, uh, when it's I guess uh, our our studio or our uh, on import will will come up with a name. Okay. So how does this look? <laughs> yeah. This is almost like Pokemon, isn't it? So we've got the data frame loaded. Uh, we we uh, tried out the head function. Um, we we tried another argument to reduce the size of the head, the output, the glimpse. Uh, now let's continue our exploration of the data, and let's try another function. It's called names. And when you run names with the name of the the data frame, uh, we just get all the variables output. Uh, the variable names, so that uh, when we refer to, uh, if we want to know what to refer to, we can easily uh, copy paste. Because as you know, when you want to refer to a column name, you have to be exact in your in your uh, spelling. Um, another thing that we can do is to look at the class of items. So the class refers to what is the measurement scale? Is it nominal? Is it numeric? Is it uh, others? And so. Uh, when we do this, we need to specify the column as well. So here's an example. Here's the class of DF term is an integer. And if I peek here, uh, yes, this should be an integer because uh, it is a, it is all numbers, except that we don't want it as an integer. We want it as another class. Uh, we want to uh, make sure that this is uh, coded as a factor uh, because 2002-3-0 uh, does not have the meaning of a number, but we know that it has the meaning of uh, of a particular duration in the semester, and we are going to analyze the data, uh, considering it as as different um, as different categories, different semester categories. So, in order for us to do that, we're going to um, we're going to have to reassign. We're going to say df term is equal to, and uh, this I haven't talked about before, but chevron dash is the the correct term for uh, an equal sign in uh, for the equal symbol in R. You could you could actually use uh, an equal sign as well, and that works too. So here we're going to say as dot factor df term. Uh, so this is something I, I can execute it twice just for. So here when we do that and when I rerun the class inquiry, now it tells us that it's not an integer, it's a factor. So as a, as a little mini exercise, try to run the class for uh, each of the other uh, variables. And I'm curious what you think, uh, is it are all of them coded correctly? And if not, what should they be? 
I, Lev, it would help if you put in the chat window what each variable should be coded as. Um, well, like, let's, what, are, what are we all hoping for? Because I wouldn't have known that about term. I would have just said, OK, fine. It's, oh, a, it's, a, yeah. it's numeric, well, it, fine. It, it is subjective because it's technically correct that it's, it's an integer, but, but the way that we're going to use the variable is going to be factor. Um, there will be it's 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 uh, because it's it, it there's no uh, right or wrong answer. Um, we can we can decide together whether or not a particular variable is is going to be um, one or the other. Here in, instead, I'll just describe. So here are the here are the options. So you could have an integer. You could have a float. You could have a character. You could have a factor. Uh, I don't know. Oh, and you could have a boolean. So these are the all the different options and of of uh, data types. I think there are actually more, but these are the ones that we may encounter at some level of frequency. Um, an integer is a whole number. A float is a decimal number. A character is a text. A factor is a a variable. So imagine if you have an independent variable, different levels of with different levels then you would want to uh, code that uh, uh, variable as a factor. And a Boolean is a true or false uh, value, T or F. Those are the two options for those, or zero or one. So um, looking through the columns, everything should be coded. Um, hmm. So I expect that uh, credit hours and course code are going to be coded as integers. And uh, perhaps perhaps for the course code, perhaps the course code would make more sense as a, as a factor rather than an integer. Uh, looking at the others, You've it already comes up like that, Kayla. <coughs> You're saying that course is a factor. No, for me it comes up as an integer. But so I would agree that maybe the course code would make more sense as a as a factor, not an integer. But um, it uh, R might R might code it as a as an integer. Uh, quality points should be a float. Oh, for floats, it actually tells us numeric, which is which is fine. Numeric is just a more generic statement. Um, let's look at others. R. This one comes up as a factor, which is okay. Uh, so this is so for repeat courses, whether a course is excluded or included, uh, that that can be a factor, and that's okay. And generally, I don't change uh, the encoding of R. There, there, there are the rare annoying situations where you want uh, a variable to be coded. Usually, usually the issue is whether it's factor or something else. That, that's really the only situation where there there is disagreement. I've, I, Lev, I've had a recent data set that I saved that should have saved simply as numeric, uh, but for reasons I can't understand, um, R assigned all of the all of the variables character values. Ooh, so yeah, then right. I had then I had to reassign all of them. So uh, I don't I'm not sure why that happened in your data set. Sometimes what happens, uh, especially when we import dirty data like this, is that you know while on the web page and copy pasting it from the web page into Excel or somewhere in the Excel file. There could be something as banal as a space uh, introduced right. Right. in one of the columns. And as soon as there's a space or there's some invisible character or, you know, a plus symbol or something like that, that changes the whole encoding of the automatic encoding of the of the file. And so that, that's one of the one of the issues. I'm not sure if that was or whether you expected that to be a clean data set or a, a messy one. But that could be one of the reasons. But this is it's helpful to go through this process. So, so just I mean for personal personally, I, I'm I'm finding it useful because I'll be able to reassign values. 
Yeah, exactly. So any when whenever you want to reassign, uh, you need to remember that you you need to you need to specify where you want to save that. Sometimes you want to save that as a new as a new column. Maybe you don't want to disturb the original column. In that case, you could uh, oops, uh, we'll just copy it over here. You could do this as well. Uh, so now I've I've saved term two. Right. I created a new column called term two, and and that's now a factor. And so when I go back here, I can see that I've got a new column called term two, which is a factor. And in that case, I could preserve the original data without touching it. And there there are good reasons to never modify the original data and any transformation or anything that you do to the data should be saved uh, either as a separate data frame or as a separate uh, variable or something else. So uh, the other related functions are as dot integer if you want to convert to an integer as dot uh, numeric as dot character as dot boolean and so on and so forth. Mm. Now you could be more you you don't necessarily have to use class. You could also ask is dot integer. You're asking a question. Is that integer term? And here we're going to say false because uh, we've already coded it as a factor and R is telling us that no, it's not an integer. Lev, are you able to get uh, anything returning when you uh, look for class? Uh, DF quality points. So you've you've now put a dot between quality and points. That's how it got imported for me. Uh, I guess it was that's that's how it was copied from the web transcript and it preserved the dot in there. Or no, but maybe it, the space, right? And then it was and, a space. Yeah. So I think R on import will convert spaces to to periods. Okay. Uh, Kayla, let me just see your question. Uh, for the top area where we can type multiple lines, we can put df term as factor anywhere before or after any line we want. Um, yeah, that's a good question, and the answer is no, uh, you can't. Uh, the only reason I can run these, so if I if I ran this before I ran the import, the read.csv, then none of these would work. Now, it's not so much the the place in in the notebook that it matters, but the sequence of activation. So as long as I know that I activate line 11 first and then line 18 and then line 14, and I do that in that sequence, then it's going to work. But most of the time, for example, when students submit a stats exam, I just want to I just uh, activate all the code at once, in which case R will activate each line consecutively, one, two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth. Now, if my code is not in that sequential order at that time, then it's not going to run properly. But but the nice flexible thing is that once I've activated and, and there are variables that are loaded in the, in the environment, then I can just jump back and forth uh, and, and activate different lines of code. OK, uh, so let's see. Let's see if we can move forward. Um, so we've we've kind of uh, understand the function of class and how to recode uh, variables as different kinds of things. Now we can get into into calculating our GPA. So let's see, this is the fun part. Uh, so let's do CGPA, which stands for a cumulative GPA. It's the simplest one. All we need to do is um, uh, compute a mean. And in order for us to do that, um, we're going to need um, uh, actually, it's it's not quite a mean. What we need to do is sum up all of our uh, quality points and divide them with the credit hours. I think that's the formula. Like so. So here you can see that we're using a function called sum and we're using a slash for division 
and uh, and then we're summing up the credit hours. Just to take a look, what we're doing is we're taking every single quality point value and we're dividing it by credit hours. So if obviously if, if I failed this class, I'm dividing zero by five. That's going to be well. Hopefully it'll produce a zero, but it's not it's not particularly meaningful. Now what we're not accounting for here in this calculation is that the, uh, in the transcript because some courses were repeated in my case um, uh, these should not be included in the transcript calculation so this is kind of a uh, not an entirely correct cgpa but when you run it you get a value <laughs> and so this is your this is your cgpa and we can we can actually assign this to a variable just to be nice and clean about it and um, and when you run it you'll get a You'll, you'll get no output, and then you can spit it out by displaying the variable. So how does, does this work for everyone? Uh, Lev, can I ask a question? Sure. Um, I have, for some reason, um, quality points and credit hours has a space in my hour, in my R. Um, Oh, it didn't import. It didn't convert to a dot to a period. No, and so how do I reassign it or rename it so that it so that it recognizes it? Because when I do class, it actually is not. Uh, it doesn't recognize it. Can you do Can you do screen share for a moment? Then let's let's see if we can troubleshoot. Yeah. Um, Kayla, I see you're you're saying that you're getting NA. I'm not sure uh, you're getting NA for the O for the calculation of the CGPA. That would not be good. That means that uh, that's possible that you didn't clean up the Excel file correctly, and there's maybe a row with some guck, and that converted. Then your if if there's even a single NA, then that would muck up your calculation, or that could, or maybe for the currently taking courses. Uh, it depends on what that looks like, but let's let's look at uh, Danny's situation here. So, um, okay, so you've got your DF coming in. Can um, so hold on, oh, this bar is in the way. I can't see the most relevant. How do I get rid of this Teams uh, control bar? Mm. Well, that's terribly. Annoying. Mm. What what can't you see? Uh, I can't see the the last line of your console because uh, my just like you <laughs> by my mouth th there's this uh, Microsoft Teams uh, oh. control. Can you maybe? Oh, there. Okay, just disappeared. Can you go back to or? Okay, oh, there we go. So I see. So it in, imported it, yeah, without the period. In that case, can you uh, on line twenty-two uh, and line twenty-one? Can you place credit hours in double quotes? After the after the dollar. After the dollar sign, yeah. Like that or double? Oh. Yeah, double double or single. It shouldn't matter. But let's see if that that does it. Oh, yeah. look at it. It works. Okay, Good. so. I don't know what version of R you have. Why does it do that? But um, okay. But regardless, it, that seems okay. to fix the problem. It's just a little more um, right. Rigmarole. I think there is a way to to rename. Um, uh, 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 that's, that's okay. I can look it up. Only, no, I, I got it here. Let me just. Uh, so if you disc, discontinue screen share, I'll do mine. Um, I think it's call names. I'm just uh, let's just quickly look at the row names, call names. Mm -hmm. So if I say call names df, call names df quality points. So if I do uh, this. 
so I'm gonna since mine already has the period. So here, Danny, I think you might try using double quotes. So yours would look like uh, this, and then here you type whatever you want it to be. And um, so if I run this, no, it didn't work that way. Hmm. Oh, maybe I need to use a uh, no. Where? Oh, it's a no. Oh, what's wrong here? Hmm. Well, that's curious. Okay, well, uh, I think this, for some reason, it works like this. <laughs> yeah, it worked. It really, so here it is. Okay, sorry. Uh, I just fiddled around with it. I think it's like this. Nope, okay, it doesn't like that either. Uh, then it, it could be like this. No, buggers. <laughs> anyway, okay, so it doesn't work like this, but if you specify it by the name of the column, Sorry, the, the number of the column, it's the eighth column. So when you run it like this, you, you just read out the call names of all of them. Uh, you say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so if you want to rename the eighth column name, then you just type in call name DF and you want the eighth value to be renamed to be QP. Oh, hold on. For me, it's no longer QP, so it might be like this. This is uh, this is very 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 aggravating. I'm getting any of that. Hmm. Well, I'm I'm not sure what I'm getting wrong here. Uh, so it should be possible to reference a column either by the by the column number or by its name, and I am obviously not doing a very good job with referencing it, and I'm not sure. Does anyone know how, why am I not getting this right? <clears throat> no one knows, okay. Well, um, this, so you're referencing the, the, the data frame by, by the number. Does this make sense, Danny, what, what I wrote here on 33? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so let's move forward. If uh, if uh, you guys are all kind of um, making sense of this, so the next one that we could calculate is your psychology, your psychology GPA. So what are what are what is your GPA when you just simply um, want all of your psychology courses, nothing else? And for this, we need to introduce a new concept called subsetting. But uh, we can also refer to this by filtering or extracting, so some something like that. Uh, that depending on the programming language and, and your mode of thinking, you can refer to it uh, by I, any of those words. So if I want a psych C, uh, GPA, I need to be able to uh, refer to um, only courses that have the psych, um, the psych, uh, code so if i just quickly run ahead here uh, if what i want is subject to be equal to psych and and nothing else and there's a way to do that uh, if we do um, df and the square bracket will allow us to specify a filter inside it and so here within here i want the subject to be equal to uh, PSYC, and it's important that you use double equal signs. Double equal signs is, is always a question mark. Is it equal to? Whereas a single uh, equa uh, equa um, equal sign will usually mean assign the, ver the value to it. And we also need a comma here because here we could specify column filters, but we're not. So the first element in a filter, so I'll just re redo this here as a template. Uh, so here goes 
a row filtering in the first element and in the second element you can do column filtering so as you can see the way we've written uh, this uh, uh, this line here line 40 we've specified a row filter so we only want certain rows to be returned and we're not going to specify a column filter which means that we want still all of the columns to be returned so when i run this oh it immediately spits out a nice big uh, data frame uh, that contains, as you can see, only site courses, nothing else. So I, it looks like I've taken quite a few uh, site courses, and, and for this reason, I've got, I guess, uh, a number of rows returned. So this is what this is our launching point for this new calculation. The GPA calculation is still going to be the same, so we still need to construct uh, a calculation where we divide quality points by credit hours but we need to include our filter, our filtered uh, data frame in place of the whole data frame. And so for this to work, so I'm going to just call it psych GPA. And we're going to sum up the values uh, that are in here. And this time I'm going to specify a column filter as well. So my column is going to be in this version, I want the quality points to be returned, and I and I renamed it now to QP. So I think this is what I need to do, QP like that. And when I run it, I don't get any errors, and I get a total number for all the quality points. And I divide it, and I'm just going to duplicate this with the um, with the credit hours, and I think I'm just calling it credit dot hours like so. So when I when I run this, you can see my uh, my psych GPA that is um, that is only counting for all of my all of the psych courses that I've taken. Does this make sense? Uh, question. Sure. Here it is. <coughs> so uh, when when we uh, write up complicated lines of code like this one, it's always a good idea to start off easy. So in this case, I I wrote up the code that's kind of the core, and then I just build around it. So here is uh, with uh, so this line of code is just with the row the row filter and then I can complexify it. So here I will include a column filter um, with the column filter too. And then I can complexify it further and I can just do uh, the sum of it, right? The sum of all of that. And so now it's a little, and, and you can just uh, sum in the quality points. And, and you can just build your code and complexify it slowly, slowly, and make sure that at each step it works, because if this doesn't work, it's a huge mess to figure out what the heck I, I mucked up. Whereas if you slowly build up your code and complexify it uh, little bit by little bit, then uh, as, soon as, it, as soon as it stops working, you know that you've made a mistake at a certain step. Okay. Uh, any questions about this? Does this work? Are you? I'm going to pause here for a moment until. Um... Kayla, uh, I'm not sure if you'd want to do screen share. You're saying that you keep getting zeros. It, it sounds like you have a, a co an encoding issue for your um, for your data frame. So uh, your your credit hours and or your quality points are not encoded properly. Uh, did you check that both of them are coded as uh, numeric or integer? Did when you want you... screen share? Yeah, if 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 you don't mind, then we can we can um, we can troubleshoot it and see what's wh why you're getting what you're getting, and that could be helpful for others. Okay, so uh, what did you want to see? Um, by the way, was I not screen sharing all this time? Oh, you will. I am. Oh, the, oh, I guess it just automatically turns off when you. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Okay. 
Cool. Uh, so looking at your stuff, so I see credit hours, quality points. Can we run a class on each of those? Uh, hold on. Which one it was? Uh, which one did you want to run a class on? Uh, on credit hours and quality points, 18 and 19. Okay, so that uh, I, I don't think that's an issue that one is an integer, the other is numeric. Uh, it'll just convert it to numeric, whatever the product of those is. So going downhill, uh, so 20, what does 22 produce for you? What? Uh, line 22, what does that produce for you? Oh, this? Uh, this hold on. Okay, so that actually produces a number for you. Yes. Uh, wait. So now you're saying that for... Uh, for 25, you're not getting. Do that, and then I do this. Yeah. That is zero, right? Okay. Oh, uh, so, okay, okay. so can you can you select just the innermost part of each of the one in line 22? So let's pick maybe the filter yeah. portion. Yeah. Not that. But include the include the DF to the left. Oh, and just run that. Yeah, that just that portion. Yeah. Nice. So okay, so there we go. There's there's our issue. I don't think. Hold on. For you, it's not QP. Remember, I I was fiddling around and I renamed oh. my name to be QP. Oh. But for you, it's oh. quality dot points. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So can I? Okay. Quality dot points. Oops. Bada boom. Out of thing. All right, there we go. Well done. Well, I mean, the GPA is not that good, but thank you. Well, you're not at the end either. Okay. Okay, sounds good. So let's, um, uh, I guess I'll open, open my screen. Uh, so how does this look for everyone? Any comments, any questions about this? No comments or questions. Okay. Um, okay, so I suppose uh, we can move to a, a far more relevant calculation. Uh, this is the calculation of your GPA for the last two years, and this is relevant often for graduate school because uh, ma many, if not most, universities will only look at your uh, last two years' worth of GPA rather than your CGPA. Or, or sometimes they look at your psych GPA, but but definitely the last two years of, of your GPA. And so here we need to introduce uh, uh, another kind of filter. Uh, so here we need a filter, filter for data uh, from the last two years. Um, anyone have any guess how we would do this? Do, do you want to give it a shot? See if you can come up with a filter that's a lot like this, but um, or any of these, but it filters for 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 data from the last two years. So I guess uh, right now it's 2020. We're looking for data from 2018. Any thoughts? Anyone want to help me? <laughs> I'm a no. <laughs> Well, let's see how what what is the what is the data frame that we need to look at in order to uh, compute the last two years worth of uh, values. 
<laughs> the only time indicator in here is the term. So we need to decide, I suppose, uh, what is the cutoff? And I have nothing in scope here, but let's say that uh, I started grad school in 2008 fall. And so for me, the last two years of cutoff was uh, 2006 uh, fall, I suppose, uh, or at the time of application, I would have applied in 20 or 2007 fall would have been the application period. So I would need to go back to 2005 fall in order to get uh, get my two years worth of data. So um, uh, in this case, actually, uh, I, I was wrong uh, when we coded the data as a factor. We actually want to use this as an integer because uh, even though, uh, Andrew, you're right, that this is a six digit value, it is, uh, it is, um, it's, it's not an, um, it's not a ratio uh, variable, but it is an interval. It is an interval variable, which means that as numbers go up, they indicate more and more recent uh, terms. So we can we can handle it as an integer. And my my initial instinct to code it as a factor was wrong. So let's go back and 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 uh, and recode it now as a um, as an integer. So as dot integer uh, df term. So uh, just to verify that this worked, uh, it worked. It's back to an integer. And so now uh, my um, filter is going to look something like this. So we're not picking uh, subject any anymore. We're going to pick term and we want a term that is greater than my value, which is going to be for me. It's 2005-30. And so when I run this, I don't get anything. Um, maybe it needs to be in double quotes. Yeah, it needs to be in double quotes. Sorry about that. And so here it is. So I've got just the last two years of data uh, selected out uh, in, into this situation. Um, oof. When I when I recoded it as a uh, ooh, you, 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 that's bad. Um, as you can see, when I recoded as an integer, um, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, the term was recoded into arbitrary number, not numbers. Uh, that goes from one through fifteen because there are fifteen semesters that I've I've uh, I've spent at Quantland. So this is this is even worse than I thought. Uh, I'm going to suggest that we reload the data. So Kayla, this is where your question of you know running code in sequence comes in. Uh, I'm going to rerun line eleven in order to read the CSV back, and I'm not going to run a conversion to a factor so that when I uh, so I don't need any of this as I don't need to code it as an integer again. When I run it, it's already coded as an integer because of how um, because of how R coded it during import. And so now I've got the correct term uh, once more. I've did this. I did this a little fast. So if uh, you want me to say this again, just let me know. But this time uh, it should work and it does. So now now I've got the correct terms um, pulling up just from 05 to uh, 08. And if I want to do just quality points, uh, did I change it again? Oh, um, yeah. You renamed it. It was quality points. You renamed oh. it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. okay, here we go. So now I've got all the quality points selected. Uh, here are all, all the um, credit hours selected, and so now I'm ready to uh, ready to make the. the I'm, I'm just gonna get it. I'm gonna call it two GPA. Uh, and here's another way to do it. If you want to do it kind of aesthetically pleasing way, uh, uh, you can assign each of these lines as a variable. So you could. I will just call this QPI, and I'm gonna call this CH. 
And so when I run these, they become QPI CH and I can do QPI over CH. And so this is this is even cleaner if you think about it. It's not messy like line 46. Oops, and I need to sum it, of course. Oops, how did I forget? Like so. So there it is. So there, there is the last two years of GPA uh, going into a grad school application. And <laughs> for you, you might want to adjust your year to be 2018 or, or whatever, uh, yeah, depending on what your your uh, data looks like. You might not have anything from 2018 yet. OK, how does this look? Any comments or questions? Nope, no questions. As a last, oh, wonderful, Kayla, great. Uh, as a last thing, I'm going to show you something fancy, and, and this will end the workshop. We're going to visualize our GPA by term in a bar plot, but we're going to do it the fancy way. We're going to install a, a library called dplyr, and we're going to do this uh, so fancy graphics uh, coming. Uh, uh, so here we're going to say install.packages dplyr. Uh, this is a this is a really handy, very commonly used package that allows us to do all kinds of uh, calculations uh, in a much faster and, and cleaner way. And I'm going to uh, use what's part of dplyr is called piping. Uh, the concept of piping means that we can uh, pipe or feed uh, the output of one line of code into the next line without having to without having having to reference it. Uh, so as you could see what we've done up here, 55, 56, 58, I keep referring back to QPI and I'm referring back to CH. And so that one is uh, that was kind of a nag. Uh, so we're going to do it in a simpler way. And so here uh, what I want to do is uh, come up with my TGB, TGPA calculation. So that's uh, term GPA. So for each term, you can also compute your GPA. And we're going to do uh, the DF. So we're going to load our uh, um, uh, data frame. And here's the piping operator. It's a wildcard, uh, Chevron wildcard. And when I press enter, it doesn't even place my cursor back to the beginning, but it subsets it. So now I'm going to pipe my data uh, that starts with this definition of TGPA, and we're feeding the, the our our uh, transcript into it. And so the number one thing for DGPA to work is we need to use a uh, a function called group by, and we want to group it by uh, our semester. Now let's just take a look at um, what is our semester uh, data again. So our semester is going to be, I guess, term. Um, I believe this will be it. So term, and uh, we're going to pipe this to the next line. And we're going to, so I don't, so we have a bunch of uh, values now for each term, but we want to calculate the same GPA for every single term. And we want to do it in one line because we don't want to redo it for every single term that we've done. And so we can run a summarize function and inside it we can uh, specify <laughs> that we want to uh, uh, we want to compute uh, again, so we're gonna do the quality points dot points, and uh, we're gonna compute now the the credit hours. Actually, I think inside for arguments we need to use uh, equal signs. It's only outside that we use. so we do credit hours and. <laughs> Now we can pipe this into our next line. And we can say to mutate, 
to do a mutation and we can uh, uh, specify all kinds of uh, mathematical arithmetics and other stuff, we want to compute our TGPA and it's going to be some QP divided by some CH, just like uh, computed on line 68. And this should have produced. Oh. Oh, sorry. Important thing we need to load the library dplyr once you've installed it. Dplyr, sorry. Uh, there it is. So uh, the piping, the piping feature is inside dplyr, and there it is. So we've co computed our TGPA. When I output this uh, new data frame that we've computed, this only contains our TGPA values as the third column. So you can see that we've computed the sum, we've computed the sum of equality points and credit hours and the division for each of the um, for each of the semesters that you're uh, enrolled in. And we've done it all in in, in three um, three lines of code. And so now we can we can feed this, you know that we can feed this into a bar plot if you're familiar with bar plots. Um, so we can specify our new data frame. And uh, I, I mean, this would be enough. We could just run this on its own and you can already see it. But we, you know, we can make it a little flat fancier so we can specify a limiter so that, uh, you know, it, it goes a little bit higher. Um, uh, five so that we can see the top comfortably. Uh, we can specify a color just to make it fancy, you know, Quantlin Red. Let's go with the brand name. Uh, Bain, uh, so we can, you know, my, G, my, my term GPA over time. Uh, we can specify, uh, we can specify the names uh, of the, of each of the term that is, uh, that is in there. So here, um, I guess we could specify the DF. I don't know if this will work exactly. And then see if I think that was just something to uh, make make the words small enough. So there it is. This doesn't quite look the way I expected it to look. Oop, we have an issue. Incorrect number of names. Oh, I see. So the, there's an issue with the term. Oh, <laughs> I see. That's why I had this here before. There it is. So there it is. There's your visualization of your performance over time. Oh wait, I gave you control, but I'm not sure why. <coughs> what are we trying to do, Danny? Yes, here it is. So how does it look? Any questions? Uh, uh, did I load a lot on you? Do you need uh, more time? Do you need clarification?
Mario, yes, you can input custom colors. I think you can specify, instead of saying red, you could specify RGB, RGB values. And then you can get uh, you can get any of the millions of colors. Kayla, it's not working. Do you want to do a bit of a screen share to see what's going on? OK, all right. Um, OK. So I have this uh, for whatever reason, whenever I run. These are the arrows down here. Uh, so Lan, does does thirty four to thirty seven work? Yes, that works. Okay, can you spit out TGPA? Let's see. Okay, that looks beautiful, very nice. And so now the bar. Oh, you need a comma uh, on four on thirty nine. Oh, right here. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. That's good. Look at that. Beautiful. Um, any other questions? Well, this is this is the workshop. This uh, fancy visualization concludes our fun with R. Um, if uh, if you have any follow up questions later on, or if you want to uh, fiddle around together with R, just let me know and. <laughs> you know, with screen share, it's very easy to troubleshoot and figure things out. If there are no more questions, then um, then we can conclude this session, and uh, and I'll uh, Sydney will um, I'll, I'll I'll be in touch with Sydney about how to distribute this file to all of you so that you can uh, you can modify it and you can fiddle around with it. Absolutely. Uh, thank you all so, so much for coming. I hope that was helpful for all of you. Uh, I'm also going to be posting a feedback survey in the chat. If you have the time and you're willing, uh, we would really appreciate feedback about what you did and did not like about this event. So hope you guys all have a wonderful day. And uh, I will be in touch um, probably online and with Levi um, about how you guys can get the uh, copy of this recording. Perfect. Oh, wait a sec. I can just plop, plop it in here, right? Yeah, I think it, sh it should end up in the this chat window anyway, I believe. I've never used uh, Teams recording yet, but <laughs> according to Google, that's what it should do. So. OK, well, I'm going to plop it in here, and oh. I'll still give it to you, and, and you can make it available wherever else uh, it makes sense. OK? Yeah. OK, sounds good. Bye, everyone. Goodbye.